world's beaches and shores stretch for thousands of miles around every continent and island. There are rocky cliffs, sandy beaches, oozing mud flats, and hot mangrove swamps. The coast is a meeting place between the sea and the land. Coasts are never the same for very long. At high tide, the shore is covered in salty seawater, while at low tide, the coast is exposed to sun and wind. The constant battering of waves against the cliff wears away the rocks. Eventually, the cliff crumbles and rocks fall, creating a rocky beach. Over time, more and more rock ends up in the sea. Groans are special walls built on a beach to protect the coast from battering waves. The groans slow down the waves and trap the shingle, or sand, so it is not carried away. Soft rocks along a coast wear away faster than hard rocks, creating bays. The hard rocks form headlands. These headland rocks slowly wear away, first creating caves, then arches. A split is a narrow strip of land that is formed when the tide remove sand from one beach and drop it farther along the coast. When beaches are covered with rocks, they're called rocky shores. The rocks create a lot of hiding places for animals. When the tide goes out, water is trapped between the rocks. This creates tidal pools cut off from the sea until the tide returns. The tidal pools are miniature worlds that provide shelter for plenty of animals, such as starfish, snails, crabs, and barnacles. Some seaweeds also live in tidal pools. Seaweeds cling to the rocks surrounding the pools. Small animals such as crabs, snails, and fish hide among the seaweed. The blenny, a small tidal pool fish, is also called the sea frog because it likes to sunbathe on the rocks. It jumps back into the water with a plop if it is disturbed. Life is tough on rocky shores. When the tide goes out, the animals that live on the rocks have special ways to survive out of water. The limpets have a dome-shaped shell that can survive the battering waves. Limpets feed on tiny algae that grows on the rocks. When the tide goes out, the limpets stick tight to the rocks so that they do not dry out. Mussels attach their shells to rocks. They have two shells that hinge together. When covered by water, mussels open their shells and feed. When the tide goes out, they shut their shells tightly together for protection. Most sea anemones do not like being uncovered by the tide. Some survive by pulling in their tentacles. They look like a blob of jello on the rock. Cliffs tower above many shorelines. They are often windy places spread with salty water. Life is difficult for the plants and animals that make their homes high on the rocks. Cliffs are large lumps of rock that rise almost straight up from the shore, most around 330 feet tall. But in the Hawaiian Islands, summer cliffs are 3,300 feet high. Cliff plants grow in the gaps between the rocks, they grow close to the ground to stay out of the wind. Cliffs are home to colonies and groups of seabirds such as gannets and kittiwakes. They like cliffs because predators such as fox and cats cannot reach them. They lay their eggs on narrow ledges of the cliff's steep edge. Puffins live together in large colonies on cliff tops. They make their nests in long burrows that they dig in the soil. Tiny grains of sand are made as waves batter rocks into smaller and smaller pieces. Tides carry the sand along the coast and wash it up on the shore to form sandy beaches. Coconut palms are a common sight on tropical beaches. When coconuts drop into the sea, they are carried by the tide to other beaches, where they grow into new palms. Soft, sandy beaches are perfect places for many sea creatures, such as seals, to give birth. Seals raise their young in large colonies on the beaches. At first glance, little seems to live on a sandy beach, but many different animals, such as crabs and snails, are hidden in the sand. They come out of hiding when the tide comes in. The sand dollar is related to the starfish and sea urchins. It has a flat body covered by spines, which it uses to burrow through the sand. Danger lurks in the sand. The weaver fish has poisonous spines, which stick up for protection when it has buried itself in the sand. Anybody with threads on it gets a very painful sting. The highest point reached by the tide is called the high tide mark, and the lowest point is the low tide mark. 
The shore between these two marks is divided up into high, mid, and low tide zones. Animals such as the cockle hide from the predators in the sand at low tide. They emerge when the tide comes in. Cockles are hunted by many animals, including crabs, birds, and fish. Waves wash seaweed and other marine debris up on the beach, where it collects in a line at the high tide mark. This is called the strand line. The strand line is mostly a smelly mass of rotten seaweed, but it also contains dead bodies of fish and birds, and garbage from passing ships. Ghost crabs emerge from their sandy burrows in search of dead fish. They use their claws to tear the fish into small pieces that they can eat. Sand fleas are among the smallest scavengers on the strand line. These flea-like animals use their long legs to hop over the sand. Sometimes the dead bodies of whales and seals are washed up onto shore. These attract animals such as brown bears and eagles. Bears that live by the coast often walk along the beach looking for food. Estuary mud is thick and very smelly, but it is full of nutrients. This makes it a great home for animals such as worms and snails. Wading birds have differently shaped bills designed to help them feed. The oyster catcher, for example, uses thick, straight bill to open the shells of mussels and razor shells. The lugworm digs a burrow in the mud and sticks water into its burrow and filters out any food. Wading birds prey upon lugworms, pulling them out of their burrows. Mud is full of all kinds of snails, such as cockles, periwinkles, spiral shells. Spiral shells are found on the surface, but cockles lie under the mud. The bodies of flatfish, such as place, turbot, and flounder, are squashed from side to side. This shape is perfect for living on the seabed. If you look closely, you can see that both eyes are on top. Swamps and salt marshes lie close to the shoreline. When the tides are high enough, seawater often covers them, bringing in plenty of nutrients. Salt marshes are formed when mud builds up behind banks of small stones, called shingle. Salt-loving plants, such as cord grass and sea lavender, start to grow. The marsh is crisscrossed with small streams or creeks that fill with salt water during the high tides. Salt marshes are breeding grounds for shrimp and fish. The young shrimp and fish spend their first part of their life in the safety of the creeks before they swim out to sea. Alligators are reptiles. The American alligator is found in salt marshes and swamps where it hunts mostly fish and crabs. Large alligators attack deer and even other small alligators. Mangrove swamps are found along tropical coasts near the equator. Here, there are strange looking trees, fish that can walk, and crabs that wave to each other. Mangrove trees look as if they are growing on stilts because their roots pouring them in the mud. The mud skipper has gills, but is mostly breathed through its skin. This allows the fish to leave the water he uses his still front fins to push his body across the mud and even up to mangrove roots. Offsprays are the top hunters in a mangrove swamp. They feed on fish and small animals. They build their nests out of the twigs which they use for many years. Many creatures such as crabs and turtles crawl onto beaches to lay their eggs. Their young hatch a few weeks later and hurry away to begin life in the ocean. Female turtles dig holes on the beach where they lay about 100 eggs. They cover their eggs with sand and then return to the sea. After baby turtles hatch, they dig their way out of the nest and dash across the sand to the sea. Birds and crocodiles gather on the beach to feed on the baby turtles as they emerge, but some make it safely into the ocean. Each spring, when there is especially high tide, up to one million horseshoe crabs appear on the beaches of Delaware Bay. Each female crab is a small pit and lays about 20,000 eggs. Red crabs live in the forest on Christmas Island in the Pacific Ocean. Once a year, the crabs leave the forest and walk to the ocean, where they breed on the beaches in places millions of crabs are on the move, covering the ground. All right, that's the end about beaches. Hope you guys learned a lot. I know I did. Next, we're gonna learn about coastal life 
See you next time. Bye.